Hey, it's Joel Brown, master coach and trainer. And today we are going to be talking about how the perfectionist, aka the obsessive idealist, loses energy, focus and inspiration before reaching their goals or their vision. Now, if you don't know what the obsessive idealist is, it is one of the six procrastination types. If you don't know what your procrastination type is, then you can go to doquiz.com. That's D-O-Q-U-I-Z.com. And you can just take this quick three minute quiz to find out what your procrastination type is. I've supported thousands. I'm talking over 7,000 people worldwide to be able to break through their procrastination patterns. And uh, this is an absolute game changer. So don't miss out on this. Find out what your type is so you can conquer the procrastination and counteract those patterns. Uh, so with the perfectionists, the obsessive idealist, what they tend to do is they have this like novelty or this dopamine rush that they are filled with often when it comes to their goals. And what can happen when you are pursuing your goals is you initially have this awesome rush of dopamine and it'll essentially get to a point where your neurotransmitters that are associated with pleasure, with reward and motivation start to deplete. And this is where that like good feeling and that adrenaline rush starts to wear off. Uh, and then this is where the perfectionist tends to start to feel like, oh, maybe I'm not inspired anymore. Right? So there's something chemically that's shifting. And a lot of perfectionists get caught up in this. They get excited at the start of the journey towards their goals. And then right near the end, they start to feel like, man, was this even worth it? You know, I personally have been an obsessive idealist. I've counteracted a lot of my procrastination patterns and I have a way better mental and emotional management, but also a chemical management, understanding how the dopamine, the oxytocin, the serotonin works and so on and so forth. I've been coaching for 14 years and it's something that I've become very much obsessed with is understanding how we can maximize and optimize the way that we think, the way that we feel to be able to achieve our goals. And so it's a huge thing that I see for obsessive idealists is this depletion of dopamine. Uh, the next thing is there's this idealization that takes place for somebody that is a perfectionist or obsessive idealist. They idealize how they think it's going to be. And then as they are facing challenges along the way, and maybe you relate to this, you're, you're getting in there with excitement, it's fun, it's inspiring. But as you approach things that you didn't expect, you start to feel like, man, is this, is this fun now? Like, is this the vision that I'm initially uh, excited about? And, and now am I actually turning this into reality? Or was this just some sort of pipe dream, right? And this can affect your execution. It can affect the way that you are able to face the reality of the journey towards your goals. And it can leave you feeling disappointed and, and unmotivated. Uh, so we're going to be careful of that. The next thing is really just a fear of completion. Like, oh, if I get there and to the top of the mountain and feel like, man, is this it? Is this all it is? What a terrible feeling that is, right? Uh, you may even get to the end of the goal and think to yourself like, well, am I good enough? Was that the best that I could do? And obviously we should check in on ourselves. We should have high standards, but the obsessive idealist tends to uh, have this fear of completion that comes in because they wonder, you know, how is this going to be received? And is this really going to be as good as I thought it was? So be careful of that thinking. It's a trap. <laughs> It's normal for us to have imperfections. It's normal for us to create things and then not know how it's going to be. Uh, if we knew everything and always had certainty, uh, that wouldn't be fun either, right? So there's a mystery to our creation, which is, you know, the, the spice of life, as we call it. Uh, also, energy expenditure. This is a big one for the obsessive idealists. They tend to burn out quite a lot. Uh, they work and work and work and work and work. And then they get to a point where they don't know how to slow down and then they reach this sort of mental fatigue. And this is usually because they don't take breaks, right? Uh, so if you're an obsessive idealist, you got to make sure that you're taking some time to go and chill out, to reconnect with your body instead of being in your mind so much, uh, to go outside and get some fresh air, uh, to get away from the computer screen or your phone or 
wherever you are when you're working, maybe even the whiteboard. It doesn't matter if you're not even on technology, but you're constantly drawing and thinking. You want to get out of your head and back into your body. You want to breathe and become present again, right? Instead of being so fixed on the future of how it's going to be and, and getting so excited by that. That's, that's fun and that's cool, but you can't stay there all the time, right? You, that's where you start to become disconnected from yourself and your body does not get happy about that, right? That's where you get exhaustion. And I personally have had adrenal fatigue as a, I'd say an ex obsessive idealist because I used to be more of one. Uh, and I had to be very careful with that. So you want to eat healthy, take breaks, get fresh air, drink water, uh, and just not get stuck in this crazy loop of always running so hard, okay? Uh, the next thing is routine and monotony. Sometimes the obsessive idealists will get really sick of the, the feeling of constantly having to run in circles to make something work. And Sometimes business requires this. Sometimes in your career, there are monotonous aspects. Maybe that's what you're getting paid for is to do the things, the tasks that uh, some people don't want to do. That's why they pay you to do it. Uh, and if it's in your business, not all business is sunshine and rainbows. So it's really about like shaking it up a little bit, right? Having a planning stage, having a brainstorming stage, having a stage to like celebrate your wins and also to be able to break the routine. Maybe working somewhere different in a different environment, maybe breaking up the, the times that you work. So you're not constantly running on like six hour sprints, but instead doing like spurts of one hour work and then going and getting something to eat or drink of water or your vitamins or your minerals, like feeding your body. And, and maybe you're meditating or visualize doing a visualization and allowing yourself to reconnect. That's going to be really good for you. So that is just obviously, one out of many solutions for you as the obsessive idealist. It is good to visualize the end result and know that even if things don't always work out the way you want them to along the way, that you can still steer yourself and recalibrate towards what you've been visualizing. I truly believe we can create what we envision, but it takes discipline and it takes patience sometimes too. Um, revisiting your why is really important. Instead of idealizing about how awesome it's gonna feel or gonna look, we want to come back to and connect with why it was important for you to have that goal, that vision in the first place. Uh, and again, like just having like milestones, you know, some people don't do that. They don't have like these little points where they are celebrating the wins. It's like you complete one project, cool, or, or like just complete, you get to sort of the 90% mark or the 80% and you start to feel like you're uninspired. You're like, oh, what was the point of that? You Maybe you push yourself through and finish it. And then there's nothing to celebrate or get excited about. And this can be a, a dreadful pattern to be in. You want to be able to still celebrate the wins, turn around at the end of the day and say, hey, I'm grateful that I am somebody that follows through. Uh, even if it didn't turn out like visually or even the feeling wasn't what I thought it would be, that's okay because that's going to happen sometimes. But ultimately, I'm proud of myself that I showed up. Uh, I'm proud of myself that I took breaks. I'm proud of myself that I went to uh, look after my body as well and not overwork myself. You know, all these things are important to to really manage your energy and man manage this uh, mental state here. Uh, staying organized is going to help you. So just like planning things out, having structure uh, so you can lean on that structure, whether it's a daily planner or you journal or you have like a little alarm clock there that goes off to just remind you when to take a break. All these things are going to be important for you so that you're able to feel like you have some variety. That gives you a little bit of novelty too. Because remember I said at the start of this that the obsessive idealist feels like the novelty is wearing off. You want to give yourself enough but not too much where you get distracted, right? Um, variety is important too. So what I mean by that is switch between tasks or incorporate different activities uh, related to the project to keep things fresh and exciting for you. And that may mean you might have a little bit of time to expand on what you're creating right now to see if there's another idea that could come into the mix to just keep things more exciting. Um, maybe you want to sit down and, and sort of audit and go, cool, I'm going to take a couple of these things out and then um, maybe play some music uh, around that time where I brainstorm, you know, just giving yourself a little bit of this variety in your experience rather than the monotonous feeling because the obsessive idealist hates <laughs> the monotony after a while. Uh, and then the last thing is accountability, having a mentor. That's where I step in. Uh, if you go to doquiz.com, I have my platform, all bliss, A W E B L I S S dot com. And this is where I teach you how to be able to counteract these patterns of procrastination. Again, there's six different types, right? 
Uh, you want to find out which one you are and then have customized mentorship and support, have that daily plan, have visualization exercises that are designed just for you, which is what I've done for all the different procrastination types. So anyway, click on the description in the um, uh, box below here, see the link that's there for the, the quiz. If you want to join the academy, you can jump in as well. We have a, um, an awesome you know, trial opportunity there for you to jump in. I do a weekly mentorship support as well, live calls where you can ask questions as well. So join us over at All Bliss, and I hope that this video has helped you to understand how you've been showing up and why you feel like you've been burning out or just feeling uninspired. I know you can have this like zero to 100, all or nothing sort of mentality. Uh, so I understand it can be confusing sometimes when you get excited, but then you lose your inspiration for your goal or vision at the end of it all. So uh, it's something that I, I go through from time to time, but I know how to manage it better. And I'm going to teach you how to do that too in Oblis. So take the quiz, share it with your friends, family and followers. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, uh, share this video if you feel like anybody you know needs to hear this message. And let's keep counteracting those procrastination patterns.